Hi, I'm Rob, and we're going to look at SQL optimization in terms of just fetching what we need and covering indexes. So we'll have a look at covering indexes in two forms. One is the for the entire query, and the second one is covering indexes for joins. And we'll also look at only fetch what you need, what happens with the optimization there. And then finally, we'll have a look at the Ebin RM view, which is effectively the exact control over SQL is important. <clears throat> so for this example, we're using Oracle, a uh, million customers and 600,000 orders. So not big, but big enough. So let's get into it. So here I've got a, a SQL statement, uh, select ID name from customer, we name like something, order by name, fetch this 100. Now, the thing here is I've got an index on name and ID. And if we look at this query in terms of the select clause, the where clause, the order by clause, I've got only uh, name and ID being used. So all of the columns in this query are, if you like, covered by my index. So when I have a look at the explain plan for that, um, we only have the index scan. On the on the index that I have and the cost becomes out at 36 so when I add a column it doesn't have to be a, a big column it's just a number but I add a column to this now this column is not covered by the index so when we have a look at that explain plan what happens here is we've got our index scan but now we've also got our table access by row ID of the customer table so uh, for this query execution um, it's able to get the id and name from the index but then it needs to go to the actual table blocks if you like data blocks to get the actual version data so our cost has jumped up it was actually 36 before and now it's 1800 so that's a, a covering index and what we're going to look at now is the covering index, the same index, but used on a join. So if we have a look at um, another query here. <clears throat> so let's put this all back. What I've got here is a query uh, select from order and join customer. So there I've got some customer columns, ID, name, version, comments and description. Uh, where the status is some value like new orders, uh, order by order date descending, fetch first 100. So I'm going to get the uh, top 100 new orders um, and join to the customer. Now let's just first of all get the explain plan for that and have a look. So what we really want to do is have a look at the, the cost, the total cost here of 35,337. So effectively 35,000. Um, down here we've got a, a scan against the table. And what we'll see later on is that that scan gets replaced by the index. <clears throat> so the first optimization I want to do um, is I've got... Um, a couple of varchar columns here so I'm going to not select those and I'm going to run this query well get the, get the explain plan for that now the cost is now jumped down to 17,908 so roughly 18,000 so it was 35,000 and now it's about half now what's happened there is that um, I've decided not to that I don't need these varchar columns. And these varchar columns are quite wide relative to the other columns that I have. So uh, in the in the select select clause, I've got um, numbers, dates. This is a, a small uh, full varchar, um, another number, dates, etc. So no really wide columns. So when I removed these two columns, I effectively removed quite a lot of data in terms of um, data that needs to go into the buffers for the database to do its 
joins and um, sorting, etc. So removing those varchar columns was obviously quite good. And the general thing is that if you've got you know wide varchar columns, clobs, um, and these types of things, if you don't need them, you should exclude them um, and get a significant potentially or potentially significant gain by not having to move that data around in the database. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is not include the version column. So uh, that's a, it's only a number, so it's not exactly a heavyweight column. But what I've done now is that this join to my customer table only includes ID and name. And now that's covered by my covering index. So I'm going to get a performance improvement by not including that version column. So the cost here has now gone to 6,804 as the estimate. So it was about 18,000 and now it's roughly 7,000. So we're, we're less than half of that cost. So what's happened here is that now we've got this, our index being used at the bottom here. So it's folding index scan, index fast full scan. So this has replaced um, access to uh, the customer reading the version data from the data box, if you like. <clears throat> so that that's where we're using our covering index for this join. Now, personally, this is a, a pretty uh, important optimization we can make because the thing that we're doing in databases a lot is using surrogate primary keys. So when we are doing an OLTP application, we're saying we return this order to the customer, uh, to the to the user interface. Um, we typically want to don't want to show just the ID and say, well, here's the order and it's customer fifty two. We really want to say it's uh, here's the order and it was customer Rob, along with the ID. And similarly, if we're showing you know products, we don't want to say product forty two. We would really say product and either the SKU or the name or both. So these types of joins happen quite a bit in OLTP apps where we're um, getting something and joining to you know, a customer or a product or something like that and we just want to return the name or a descriptive column along with um, the, you know, the main, if you like, object or row. So this optimization is good and, um, and handy to have um, if we have a look back at our slides here. So this is a graph of those cost estimates. So the first cost estimate was around 35,000. And what we did then was we removed some varchar columns. And those varchar columns were relatively, if you like, wide compared to the other columns, which are mostly numbers, etc. And so we got a good performance improvement by removing or removing them from the SQL Sling statement. The next optimization we got was uh, we had this join which was joining ID, name and version and we just removed the version. So we got our covering index to cover both the ID and the name for the join. So this is our index covering the join to customer and we got a jump there from about 18,000 down to about 6,800, So these are handy optimizations to be able to get. And what we need is we need a control of the exact SQL to get them. Um, so this one is, you know, we don't need to fetch um, varchars, big varchars, clobs. If we don't need them, we shouldn't get them. Um, and if we can get down to just joining just a couple of columns, like just customer name, just product name, then we can get a covering index on that join. And that's also a handy optimization. To do that, we need control over the exact SQL. So just to wrap up from an ORM perspective and from an eBeam perspective, uh, it's important to control exactly what's fetched. and, and and that's at a property level, a column level, not just a relationship level. 
So, hence, eBean has this as part of its query language design. Uh, we want the ability to have that exact control at the query language level of what is included, what part of the object graph we're going to fetch. Um, and with eBean, we can automatically tune this via auto-tune, so we can profile the object graph usage, collect that information, and, and use it to automatically tune this. So, yeah, we want to be able to do this from a language perspective uh, manually, but we can also automatically do that. Um, it's quite a bit in terms of comparing it to JPA, so I'll just do this quickly. Um, with JPA, there's sort of a combination of JPQL, eager lazy annotations, which are a hint, and fetch graph hints. So we get rather mixed results here because these are hints. So for example, with Hibernate, if you have a, an eager um, fetch type the, as an annotation, then that won't be overridden by a fetch graph hint, for example. And if you have a hit fetch graph hint, it'll only work at the relationship level and not at the column or property level. So with Hibernate, we sort of can't get these optimizations um, with entity fetches or entity queries. We do better with a less, uh, Eclipse Link, for example, though. Uh, fetch graph hint also mandates the version property. I think this is a rather unfortunate choice because it means that the covering index join optimization is, is that much harder to get. We need to now include version into our covering index, which is, you know, I think a pain. Um, and then, you know, from an eBeam perspective, this also JPA doesn't cover the, the complex graph cases. So once you include pagination, and you include multiple one-to-many's, nested one-to-many's, more complex graphs, then we need more control over how that graph is built. And so we need especially control over the batch loading mechanisms. So JPA doesn't really expose that in terms of its query language or we need to rely on vendor-specific hints, etc. So, um, And then also we need to, or we desire, to build graphs that are not only just from the database but also part of the data coming from L2. So fetch orders from the database join to um, customer information from L2 or Elasticsearch and things like that. Uh, but that's enough for now. Um, there's obviously more to talk about, but that's got to be a different video. So that's it. Thank you.